Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers at home. Welcome to another beautiful, wonderful day in the presence of God. Today, I welcome you to the Daily Devotional Guide of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Daily Fountain. Let us take one or two choruses together before we go into our text today. I will enter his gates with unscathed in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Has he made you glad? He has made me glad. I'm so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I'm so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you because thou art worthy this morning to receive glory, to receive honor, to receive adoration. Thank you for another beautiful morning that you have counted us worthy to be amongst the living. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we magnify you, we worship you. Because you alone deserve our worship and our praise. We say blessed be unto your holy name this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you didn't allow us to wake up in the hospital. You didn't allow us to wake up in the other side of life. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you worship. So, Lord, this morning we want to go into your word. We pray that as we go into your word, you will feed us. Feed us with your word to strengthen us, to encourage us, to empower us, to embolden us in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask for your Holy Spirit to lead, to guide, to direct, and to teach us from your word this morning. Take away every carnality, take away every wandering spirit, Help us to focus on you and focus on your word. That at the end of it all, may you be glorified and may our lives be blessed. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome once more. Our topic is God of orderliness. And our text is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, from verses 21 to 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verses 21 to 40. Are you with me? Can we read now? In the law it is written, with men of other tongues, other lips will I speak unto the people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying saveth not for them that believeth not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned and unbelievers, we do not say that ye are mad. But if all prophesy 
and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned. He is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of the heart made manifest. And so falling down on the face, he would worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto a defying. If any man speaks in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, that they by cause and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let them speak to himself. Let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything is revealed to another that's seated by, let the first hold his peace. For ye all may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophet. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, for they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What came at the word of God out from you? Or came at it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandment of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant... Let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, convert to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. May the Lord bless his words to our hearts in Jesus' name. Our topic once more, God of orderliness. Orderliness means arrangement, prescribe or establish procedure that should be followed in this case, we're talking about the gathering in the church. So let's quickly look at what our commentator says in our daily fountain this morning. Paul noticed immaturity in the exercise of gifts and stipulated rules for orderliness. This is because gifts are important and improper use negates their benefit. The purpose of spiritual gifts like we said yesterday, desiring spiritual gifts or any other activity in church should be for edification, as we see in verse 26. Today's passage focuses on tongues, prophecy, on tongues and prophecies. Paul encouraged the use of prophecy, but also warned that speaking in tongues should not be forbidden. Verses 39. Against this background, he emphasized the importance of prophecy for public worships, since it is delivered in the language understood by all. The congregation, both believers and unbelievers, would benefit from it, what God is saying. However, its use should be for the purpose of edification, exhortation, and comfort. 1 Corinthians 14.3, as we said yesterday. And in an instance... Where many prophecies are impacted to different people, Paul suggested that most three should share their message, while others also receive prophecies should judge and discern. He also emphasized that multiple prophecies should not be going on at the same time. The first who started prophesying should stop if a second prophecy comes up. This is possible because the spirit of the prophet is under the prophet's control. With respect to tongues, he encourages that interpretation is important to edify all in public for worship. But if there is none to interpret, 
it should be used privately. Beloved, your spiritual gifts should be handled with maturity for the edification of the church. God of orderliness. You know, I like to cast our mind back to the story of creation. We know that God created the world in six days. So we know that our God is a God of orderliness. He should have decided to create the world in one day, in two days, or in three days. Where well, he is and remains a God of order. So when we go into the church, God has given us different spiritual gifts. The church is not where we go for competition. Where we want to show off. Where we want to let others know that we are more spiritual than another person. It's for edification. It's for exhortation. And it's for comfort. No man is above God. Because when we come to church and we come before the presence of God, it is a serious business. It is not for show off. It is not caricature. It is for serious business. This is a place where we have people that have come to God for different kinds of surgeries, different kinds of problems, different kinds of problems, different kinds of pains. So it's not a place where we come to church and an unbeliever or believe unbelievers are there and we're trying to show off. Speaking in tongues is good, like I said yesterday. But if there is no one to interpret it, use it privately, speak mysteries unto God. But we are not forbidding speaking in tongues in the church. So God of orderliness. When we look at our passage this morning, it says, Wherefore, tongues are for signs, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. When a non-believer comes into the church and you're speaking in tongues, it's for them to believe. But prophecy means that something is coming out from God and there must be somebody to do what? To interpret. And so, so many people cannot be prophesying at the same time. God is a God of orderliness. When one person is prophesying, the other person should keep quiet. After the first prophecy, the second one, the third one, in order. So that we don't look like barbarians, like unserious people and unlearned people. So that when prophecy goes on in church, it helps for people to know the mind of God. It helps the people to live according to the precept, the rules and the laws of God. It brings comfort. It brings succor to people. I therefore that the whole church be come together into one place and speak with tongues and come those that are unlearned or unbeliever if they say ye are mad. So when so many people are speaking in tongues, it's prophesying and nobody is interpreting, it's as if we all, we've all gone mad. And that's not the essence of church. We pray that the Lord will help us this morning. But if all prophesy, there come one that believeth not and one unlearned, and he is convicted of all, he is judge of all, and tells that the secret of the heart is made manifest. And so falling down on the face, he would worship God. So when we prophesy, he should be able to break the person, to touch the person's life, to be able to bring the person to Christ. Because the essence of prophesying and speaking in tongues, the essence of church is bringing the unsaved. It's helping them to know Christ, to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. To be able to walk according to his plan and purpose. So it's not a place to show off where everybody is competing, I'm more spiritual, I'm more blessed, I have this gift, I have that gift. To hell with your gift if it does not bring edification, exhortation and comfort to the body of Christ. How is it then, brethren? When you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or by most three. And that the cause, let one interpret. 
God of orderliness. Somebody is speaking in tongues, somebody is prophesying, somebody should be able to interpret so that one is being comforted. If there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Verse 28 is the word of God and it's explicit. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that seated by, let the first hold his peace. When one person is prophesying, the other person should hold his peace. After the first prophecy, the second and the third, God of orderliness. And let the spirit of the prophet be subject to the prophet. The spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophet. That's verse 22. You know, sometimes when you invite people for programs and you give them time, they tell you the Holy Spirit uh, 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 took over and uh, I had to, you know, say beyond my time. I said, no, our God is a God of orderliness. He was able to create the world in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. When you are given a time to minister, my brothers and sisters, please, could you stick to your time? It is discipline. It is order. We must live according to how our master, our creator, our God is. And let's not lie on the Holy Spirit. You know, if it's possible for the Holy Spirit to defend himself, I'm sure there's a lot of court case that we would not finish here on earth. Because anything that happens, you will hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I ask, which Holy Spirit? Because our God is a God of orderliness. So when Paul saw this confusion in the church, he had to bring some decorum in the church, some discipline and orderliness in the church. So God of order. So when one is speaking, the other one should listen. And when you're given a specific time, Please keep to the time. It is discipline and it is very important for us as speakers, as Christians, and as children of God. One other thing that struck me in this verse that we read is verse 34, 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let women keep silence in the church, for it is not permitted unto them to speak but they are commanded to be obedient as also said the law. And if they be, they learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. These two verses is very controversial because we have different kinds of uh, authors. They've given different kinds of interpretation. Does it mean that the woman should be silent? Does it mean that the woman should not speak in the church? And so many things. But I want to tie my own to obedience and submission to your husband. We're in a gathering. And probably your husband is prophesying. The woman should not interrupt. Because the man is the head of the home. He's already prophesying. He's already speaking. So the woman should keep silent. The woman should be submissive. The woman should be subject to her husband. Because like I said earlier, the church is not where you come for competition, where you want to show who is more spiritual or who is not more spiritual. It's for serious business. So I want to say that when the man, you are in the church with your husband, your husband is prophesying, be obedient to him, keep silent. Anything you don't understand, when you get home, you can ask him. It's not as if the woman should not move or participate. No, 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 no submissive and if there's any question she should ask her husband at home you know that women we have the tendency of drama and sometimes they refer to us as drama queen we overdo things and so when we come to church sometimes we want to you know outdo what is really not important and i'm sure something would have happened that paul was trying to address but in the church of God, there must be decorum and there must be discipline. So women, be submissive to your husbands. 
And if you need to learn, you find out from your husbands. What comment the word of God out from you or comment it unto you? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spirit, let him acknowledge the things which has been written. Let all things be done decently and in order. Our God is a God of order, not a God of confusion. So there must be no confusion in the church. There must be no fighting in the church. Like I said, we all have different spiritual gifts. If you have not experienced yours, go to the Lord in prayer. Stay in the place of prayer and the study of the word of God. And say, God, I desire to have spiritual gifts. Because spiritual gifts helps to encourage, helps you to live, helps you to survive. Because without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it is difficult for one to survive. It is difficult for one to run this race. It is difficult for one to to please God. So desire it. And when you desire it, develop it. Whatever you don't develop does not grow. So when you develop it, it helps you. It helps you to be focused. It helps you not to be disturbed. It helps you to live above principalities, above past. It helps you to live above anxiety and worry. It helps you to be a champion. It helps you to be a victor. It helps you to see beyond your problems and your surrounding. And it helps you to be strong in the faith. So today we ask that God would help us to be disciplined. That in whatever assignments we are given, that we will be disciplined with our time, we will di be disciplined with our resources, we will be disciplined with the things that are internal, and with the things that are physical, and that the Almighty God will help us. Let us go to the prayer for today in our daily fountain. Lord, intensify my desire to come unto you for direction in the morning of every day of my life in Jesus' name. Lord, intensify my desire to come unto you for direction in the morning of every day of my life in Jesus name. Lord, intensify my desire to come unto you for direction in the morning of every day of my life in Jesus name. Amen. Almighty God and Father, we thank you once more for feeding us today again. Father, we pray that Lord, in areas where we need your touch, in areas where we need to be disciplined, in areas where we need to be strengthened, in areas where we need to be directed, Lord, please come into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And so this morning I pray for the unity of the body of Christ. Lord, the church is not for competition. It's not for rivalry. Father, it's for unity and oneness in the body of Christ. So this morning I pray that, Lord, there will be unity. There will be oneness in our church in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for Nigeria this morning. Father, as we go into election, that Lord, you would go before us. You would choose leaders after your hearts. Father, leaders that would do your will, your plan and your purpose. You would deliver us. You would heal our land. You would turn our situation around in the mighty name of Jesus. You will wipe away our tears. And Lord, you will give us a new name, a new song and a new beginning. Thank you, Lord, because you have done it again. Thank you because you will prove yourself. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for listening. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.